Hey YouTube, what's up? So this is going to be part two of the testing your fuse wire. Ready? Go. Um, I've been getting a lot of great comments on the video on the previous um, fuse uh, cell level cell level fuse wire video. So I've already got the ghetto rig fuse tester set up here. Um, the only thing different, of course, is the wire stretched out across uh, this PVC pipe. And of course, I have a fan taped down in the back. So hopefully I can get more airflow across that to keep it cool. So I'm going to do some of the suggestions from the comment section. Let me get those open here. Um, Eric, I'm going to ruin saying your last name, so I'm not going to say it. Uh, he wants to know if I can test a 5 amp automotive fuse. Yes, yes I can. Station 240, he wants to know if I can test actual fuse wire from the hardware store. I can, I just have to go down to the store and get it. He wants 5 amp, 15 and 30 amp. Um, he wants to know what current it takes to instantly melt the wire. 30 amp, um, yeah I could probably do that. Paul Kennett says thanks for the shout out. No problem. All I need is one of those uh, 18650 t-shirts. Uh, here's another guy that I'm going to torture his name. B-O-S-T-J-A-N, Trancer. Uh, he wants to know if I can go at 0.5 centimeters length of wire. Uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, Jason um, also thinks that spacing should be, you should test your fuse wire for the spacing for your pack. I agree with that. Um, I have seen lots of different packs that'll have short wires or really long wires. So I'll do a couple different lengths in here if I can. VMAT113, he also said that the fuse wire is going to be soldered to a copper bus bar, which has a better thermal dissipation than alligator I'll give that a try too. HB Powerwall. Uh, Peter, he's going to send me some of his fuses. So I'll do a video whenever those get here. Yeah, 0. 0.5 cm. How big is that? 0. 0.5 centimeters is 5 millimeters. Oh, okay. I can do that. Automotive 5 amp fuse. Contact. Okay. There is 5. Oh, there. Okay, there's six. Oh, there it goes. That's probably about six and a half. Contact. Nope, yep, these will burst right at seven. Okay. So we're about 9.6 millimeters wide and roughly 1.20 millimeters thick. I hope that'll work for a bus bar for this test. So I will be doing this. Uh, we'll start with the, what are those again? <clears throat> the quarter watt on the bus bar. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to get this to be around five millimeters. Okay, so that'll be 5.21. Contact. Okay, that's a good solid 5 amps. I'm going to release it there for a second. There's 6 amps. Doesn't look like it's even gotten hot yet. Okay, I'm going to let my coil up here, my wire cool down, but that fuse has not um, even budged. Okay, I'm going to go for a little higher now. Could be changing color now. There it goes. I believe that was a really good test there. Alright, Jason. Um, also said, I think you made an error on your test. You should be testing at the length your fuses will be. Your spacing on your test looked a little long. Shorter lengths will fuse open at lower currents. Okay, so we already did the 5 millimeter test. This one is at 
0.73 millimeters. I try to get the solder to the edge of the bus bar. So we'll measure from solder joint to solder joint, which is 3.4 millimeters. The alligator clips are plenty far away. Corn tech. Okay, I'll try to go up a little further. Fuse still looks good, so we'll move down the line if we can here. There's nine. Okay, nine looks good. There's ten. There's eleven. Fuse still looks good. Okay, I'm going to let my wire up here cool down a little bit. Uh, these were popping at 11 before on a 5 millimeter spacing. Okay, here we go. Contact. Okay, I just broke my wire. Let me change that. I think the theory of a shorter fuse uh, pops sooner um, is debunked, but we'll, we'll continue testing. Let me fix the wire up here. I could maybe turn down the lights a little bit. Contact. Okay, so that's a uh, past 15 amps, so I don't think having a shorter fuse will pop sooner. I completely disagree because since the bus bar is so close it's going to dissipate the heat uh, much faster. So the fuse that is further apart should burn quicker. So I will uh, unsolder this and solder a new one in with a wider gap. So this will be the next test here. I started with a brand new resistor here and I tried to solder the edges to get an accurate distance here. Okay, so that's a distance of 19.34 millimeters. Contact. Yes, yes. So, so if your fuse length is longer, it'll burst quicker. And that's holding at six amps. Six and a half. And she's gone. So six and a half amps on a wider, <clears throat> what was that, 19.3 something millimeters. Okay, this is the 0.15 millimeter wire here. We'll do a wide distance here first, and then we'll do a short distance. Okay, that is about 19.17 millimeters. And the actual solder joint to solder joint, 20.8 millimeters. Five and a half. Okay. It's a little under nine. It's getting red though. It's nine amps. Nine and a half. Okay, so that speaker wire that is point uh, one five millimeters is nine and a half amps. Here's another five millimeter, and that's solder joint to solder joint. Contact. Yes. Don't 
Good hit. It's 13 amps and it's still not blowing. Yikes. What do you guys think now? Still holding 13 amps. I'm probably going to burn my wire up here. Okay. I'm going to short it. Okay. Alright guys, I got all of my hairs cut. Um, after last night's test uh, with the actual measurements, I kind of thought about it for a little bit and I was thinking I kind of left out the temperature factor. So I'm going to retest and the only way I can kind of do the temperature is I'll do a hot and a cold. Uh, of course the cold will be just a fan on it because I know we're going to have fans because we want to get rid of the heat if we can. And then after that I'll try to use my heat gun if I have enough hands to maneuver everything. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Okay, the wire is on there. It's pigtailed off of this side, so I could actually grab it when I was putting it on here. We're on zero. We're at 5.08 millimeters, and that is solder joint to solder joint. So the first test, I'll use a computer fan uh, to simulate a fan, I guess. Okay, here is the small, small, tiny copper wire. Uh, I've got my fan here because we'll do a fan blowing on this to see if that changes it. And uh, we'll see how many amps it actually takes. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to go all the way and short it out. Contact. That's over 15 amps, so... Wow, okay. I got the meter peg, there it goes. Okay, that was a pretty good simulation, I believe. Hopefully. Uh, everybody's satisfied with that one. I'm gonna do one more of that and I'll make the fuse longer. This one actually measures, I'm trying to get about the same as before, and this one is measuring at 19.24. Okay, here we go. Contact. There it goes, about 10 amps there. Okay, hopefully everybody was satisfied with that test. Next test will be with a heat gun, if I can finagle it over here. And we'll do a short fuse and a long fuse. Okay, so my battery just died, but that is still going. You can see that it's glowing uh, kind of orange hot. When that goes away, we'll know that the fuse popped. So let me get my meter back out here again. And I'm on Fahrenheit. Okay, so I don't want to burn my table, so I'm going to let the, let the table cool off a little bit, but it's still going. So this is a prime example why you should test your wire, because 
damn it's pulling well it's 11 amps right now and it's been pulling it straight for the past 10 minutes and this is the 0.15 millimeter wire i'll even test it real quick while it's running okay now we're zeroed out 0.17 millimeter wire a speaker wire so if you have a close or a short fuse i might rethink that or get actual fuse wire that is uh, supposed to blow at its rated capacity holy crap and this one is 19.20 and that is solder joint to solder joint i'm gonna set the camera back just a little further so it won't uh, melt during the heat test okay crunk tech The table's probably damn hot too. Is that what you guys are thinking also? Like, uh, after seeing this, uh, yeah, I'm not going to be using any speaker wire. Um, I'm probably not going to use resistors. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to do some research and see if I can't find some actual fuse wire and something that'll blow smaller than 5 amps. I I'm looking for if the cell is going bad and it starts to pull 2 amps, it'll pop that fuse. I don't want the packs to come down. I want to I want to keep these batteries going as long as I possibly can. So, 2 amps is my cutoff. I guess I won't make an actual pack until I have 2 amp wire in my hands and I can test it. Do you guys have any other suggestions here in my setup? I know it's not the best because I don't have a variable uh, power supply and moving the nail <coughs> across the uh, twisted wire there it jumps around like that because the nail kind of welds itself to the wire and i tried using a piece of tungsten on there as well it was a little smoother but there wasn't much difference if you guys have any other suggestions in my setup other than getting a real power supply put some comments down below tell me if you guys are as shocked as i am because i'm pretty shocked i was kind of like gulp because man, yeah, I really thought that speaker wire was gonna go a lot quicker. And that other one, the short one, holy crap, man. Okay, so if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button and remember to comment and subscribe to see more. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Test your fuse wire if you can. Don't take anybody's word for it. Don't even take my word for it. But what you can do, you can just send them right to my video and say, hey, look, you don't have to do that, but you should do that.